I wanted a job really. Um, I mean, I'd, I'd I'd been involved in lots of businesses in like, and they finished in two thousand eight. I just lost my arse, and I went to America then for a while, and things were great. I went to the New York Film Academy, and that was cool. But then I said, you know what, I had problems with mortgages and stuff here, so I said I'll come back. And then literally, I'd seen it. It was like a beacon calling out to me every time I saw it. I was like, TV, oh, join the apprentice. So I said, I'll you know send it over, and it was literally the last minute. I was sat there about it must have been about a quarter of five. On the Monday, it was the 3rd of May, and it was the deadline was 5 o'clock, and I said, do you know what, send it. And even though I sent I said, I'll probably get in, because the, you see, my CV was ridiculous, because the business I've been involved in. So uh, I said, this is going to be interesting. And uh, it was really for me to clean the slate and get a job in the normal and start paying bills again, because, Jesus, I was on my last quid, like I was broke, you know, and I wanted a job. And some of the tasks in The Apprentice seem very difficult. I suppose as, as it got further on and there was less people, there was more work and you really had to kind of prove yourself a lot more. Yeah. Well, I genuinely didn't find it difficult. I found it difficult with the restrictions they put on you. Like, the time, obviously, is an issue. And the lack of communication. Like, you, you've only one phone between, like, probably at the start, eight people. And you have uh, one computer or you, you can't... They can't use any resources that you'd normally use. Like, if you come up with a good idea, you can't use it on the next task. Like, you'd come up with a really innovative idea, and then you say, oh, no, you can't do that. It wasn't very difficult. It was difficult when you're trying to deal with other people, and they're trying to, I suppose, showboat in front of a camera and kind of just... I was really trying to just get the job done. Like, they were going, ooh, you have to... Give me the folder. I have to look like I'm doing something. Look, if you have to look like you're doing something, you're doing nothing, so... And who are these people? Ah, I sure you... Come on, you need to spill the beans now. The show is over now, and I mean, I get on with most of them, and do you know what? They're good people at the end of the day, but they were probably put in an environment that they're not used to. Mm. I mean, I was used to it. I was used to being under pressure constantly, so... And were you all living in the house together constantly while it was going on? Yeah, like, I mean, for the... We filmed for about eight or nine weeks... So, yeah, we were there that period, all living together. And, and I mean, that's fine as well, but, I mean, I got on with everybody. Like, I went home most days and cooked dinner for them, and it was good crack. And who out of the rest of them did you bond most with? Um, I don't know if I... Like, I mean, there was, wasn't one person. Like, I liked... I really did like everybody, for the most part. Michelle, myself and Michelle, I'm sure, you know, people seen on the show that we kind of had a, an issue... And we didn't really bond really off the offset, be- probably because we're very, very different people. Um, but at the end of the day, I did always, I always give her credit for being strong, and I do like her. Um, but that's not to say I'd never work with her, but I do mm. like her. So, do you think she was a good choice out of the final four, really? That was yeah, the final four. Like, I mean, it's a justified winner. Like, I did like Neve, and I, I have so much time for Neve. I think she's a lovely, lovely person. Um, and I would have liked to see her win. I genuinely would have. I think all in all, I think Bill had decided his, the skill set he wanted. And Michelle was that, you know. He mm-hmm. wanted that little bit more experience. He wanted probably somebody that could, you know, was ruthless. And she is absolutely ruthless. Mm-hmm. And one of your tasks, you had to um, go to Terrell's Path. That seemed like a lot of fun. Oh, one, probably one of the best tasks. Um See, that's me all over. Like, I mean, that task literally suited me down to be I'm a people person. I just love going out and talking to people. And, and I mean, you ask, you can now sit here past in the morning and they'll tell you who they remember from that day and it'll, it'll be one person. Um, I just loved it. I just loved the whole thing. And, like, it just, we, we I knew we'd romp that task. Um, I just went down and met five or six key people in the town, talked to as many people on the street as I possibly could. I was just... Super. The day, it's 492 people in Tyrrell's Pass. We'd over a thousand people at that festival mm-hmm. that day. They just loved it. You know, the kids had a great day. We'd bounce in castles. We'd, we'd two bands. We'd a set of dancers on a stage. Oh, we just had everything. Like, mm-hmm. like we had a horse and cart literally going around the outside of the festival, like bringing people on free rides. We had a guy called Barney who brought down a whole fleet of Bentleys and Mercedes and all these fancy wedding cars. Um, actually, the, the wedding car that Brian O'Driscoll and Amy Herberman got married in, he brought that down. Wow. And did you find Bill fair or was he, he just very tough? Like, what do you think of him? <sighs> Bill, Bill, Bill. I, um, I've mixed emotions. Like, I mean, I, 
I genuinely do want to go in there and think, do you know what, this guy is probably like me. He's going to be so grounded. And I don't know, I thought he'd be so grounded and just, you wouldn't forget where he's from. Um, I kind of felt a little bit that, you know, he's kind of digging the hype a little bit. Um, I mean, there's plenty of times where he had an opportunity to kind of acknowledge, like, say, we'd be standing, like, ready to work or ready to get a briefing. And he'd come in and he wouldn't say hello. You know, mm. it, no cameras rolling or nothing. There was no kind of... And that was a bit... Come here, like, you know, it costs nothing to be nice to somebody. So that was a little bit, I think... Like, the first conversation I've ever had with him was, uh, like, a week ago. That was the, And I spent, like, three months with him, and that's mm. the first conversation I've had with him. And even at that, it was... No, it was fine. It was a nice conversation, but... He had plenty of opportunity to even say hello to me. Like, I remember the day I got fired, and the following day... Like, I had one day off, and then I was back for the final... Because they interviewed it the very next day. And I remember, like, I got for it. And obviously, it's emotional, blah, 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 blah. But a bit of time. And he, I was waiting in my car. And he put his head out the door. And I said, now, just, like, no cameras are on. And it was just two blokes. I said, yeah, all right. And he's nothing. For that moment, that was it for me. I was mm. like, do you know what? I'm a human being. And I just spent, like, the last nine weeks away from my family and friends just to... You know, try and impress you, and you couldn't say no to me. Sorry, that was it for me. And did you find it really hard being in the house? Did you have any communication with your friends and family? Ten over minutes there? a week. Yeah, you get a ten minute phone call a week, and that's it. That's tough. That's and I have two kids from my first wife, so I have to split. Like I'm married again, I have to split my ten minutes between my kids, two kids, eight and ten, and I've Siobhan. Um, there was issues like that. Like there's big commitment, but I went in there and I had one goal to get the job. And did you get paid while you were in the apprentice house? a washer, not a cent. So it's even tough. I you have to give up to get for nine weeks. Gel for my hair. Like I'm not kidding you. I was in, uh, where was I? At Lawn, and we were doing the four task, and uh, yeah, I couldn't get you. I had to go go a guy actually, a good Samaritan, because when you're on camera, you have to look half as well, and you're meeting people as well. So it's mm. not a vanity thing. Well, it, it's kind of vanity as well, but I like looking okay, and. Um, you know, and you're on camera all the time, you're meeting people and you're representing a company, you're representing Ford, and you have to look half presentable, as you know. So I had to blag a bit of gel. This guy, lucky enough, in the hotel brought me up to his room. The production wouldn't buy me gel. I don't smoke. And, you know, people were getting smokes every day, 20, whatever it was, tenner for a pack of smokes, I don't know. And I couldn't get a four or five quid yoga gel so uh, now the apprentice is over mm. what's next for Barry Caesar Hunt well obviously if the hairdressers opened uh, that's going okay um, you know there's other bits happening I'm doing a lot of promotional work um, maybe hopefully a bit of TV stuff in the new year like a few ideas we're trashing around with a few production companies and um, hopefully that'll kick off in February but there's a charity kickboxing thing for the Irish Cancer Society that we're doing and like hopefully Midland Radio will give me a gig as well so you never know